Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. In today's mission, we're going to be escorting convoys, or well, one convoy. And to make sure that I can actually control said convoy, I won't be using the transports. Because the transports are only controlled by AI ships. Now what I'll be doing is controlling destroyers, but all the destroyers will have their weapons turned off. Both torpedoes and gun systems are not available on these ships, but by doing so I can still control them. Now, of course, this does pose a little bit of a problem because a DD is usually at the most about two, two and a half thousand tons. Um, a transport can easily be 15,000 tons, moves significantly slower, and by doing so is far easier to hit. So I'll probably have to maneuver the DDs at about 15 knots at the most to make sure that they are, a, um, let's say, a convincing convoy. This scenario was sent in by Corwin. Um, by the way, if you want to send in your scenario, you can do so through the link down below in the description. Um, every now and then people keep posting them in the comment section, but that really does not work. You can only send them in through the link down below in the description. Corman sent in the scenario which says, You are the US Navy and you're trying out a new convoy strategy. You have two light cruisers and two heavy cruisers, and 10 to 15, whatever runs best, destroyers. The thing is that you will have to deactivate the weapons on the destroyers because they will be your transports. This way they are faster, well, as mentioned, I'm not going to use that, uh, and you can control them. I'm definitely going to use that. Your enemy will be two heavy cruisers and three light cruisers. Now, when I scroll down in his uh, email, he actually says three heavy cruisers and four light cruisers, which I think is a bit more fair, considering that the Empire of Japan, my opponent today, has technology that, according to him, is ten years beyond or ten years past mine. Um, I have a significant tech advantage. Even 10 years in this game can make a hell of a difference. Now, let's say that we have spotted the Japanese at about, well, 15 kilometer range-ish. Something like that. Mission scenario or mission um, conditions. You need to either sink 75 to 100% of the fleet or try to outrun them. You can lose a maximum of three transports. That is not a lot of losses that I can take. Three transports only. So here goes. I'm going to be designing a light cruiser. That is a really, <laughs> really big heavy cruiser. No, we're going to go with the light cruiser. And the ship that I want to try and build is the Atlanta class. The thing is, in this game, the Atlanta class sits somewhere between a light cruiser and a destroyer leader. I believe they were originally destroyer leaders, <coughs> or at least classified as such, that they were supposed to be working with a bunch of destroyers. Um, a modern light cruiser is a bit too heavy for them. Now, I will be using this hull anyway, just to make sure that I have something that sort of resembles it and that has enough place on the deck for all the guns. The thing is, in this game, if you say, well, you know what, I'm going to set it to 6,900 tons and I'll only use 5,900, for example, the game will still put the ship in at 6,900 tons. So it's more of a limitation for myself than actually for the game. Anyway, let's pull up the stats on the Atlanta class. And here we are. The Atlanta class light cruiser had 6,718 tons. Or, when under full load, 7400. So this actually works out quite well. It's just that the hull form, I think it's a bit too wide for an Atlanta. Um, let's see, the Atlantas had a beam of just 52 feet. And these ships have 68 feet. So they are definitely too wide. Still, we'll just have to work with that. Length, 487 feet. Um, on this ship versus the displacement, uh, sorry, versus the length on the Atlanta class, which was 541 feet or 164.9 meters. Anyway, um, we'll just have to use this ship as is. This is as close to an Atlanta type hull as I'm going to get, at least in the current version of the game. They had a speed, um, let's say they had a pretty decent range. I'm going to set that to long. The range was 15,700 kilometers or 8,500 nautical miles. And they had a speed of 32.5 knots or 33.6 knots during speed trials. They were using geared turbines in order to get up to that speed. 
I suppose they were using oil, but I'm not 100% on that. Uh, they are fairly new cruisers, relative. So I suppose that that's not entirely impossible. Let's give them some advanced tech. Uh, barbettes. Well, they're only light cruisers. I'm going to go with standard barbettes. This might mean that I pop a turret, especially against a heavy cruiser. Citadel. Um, I don't believe that these ships were particularly well protected. So I'm going to say you'd only had an armored citadel. Anti-flood. Yes. Reinforced bulkheads. Yes. Uh, bulkheads many. I'm not going to set it to max. Now, one thing that I would really love to simulate is the constant barrage of fire that could come out of these things. The problem with the game is that you can't quite get to that level of firepower. You can't quite get to that exceptionally good fire rate. So we'll just have to try and make do. Now, these guys had 16 5-inch guns. That's a lot of 5-inch guns. Let's see if I can fit those on here. And I believe that this is going to be quite tricky. The Atlantas had turrets in an, an ABC formation, so they were all super firing, at least from what I can tell from the images. That is, in this game, pretty much impossible. Even with a barbette here, I think I'm going to be too tall to have this gun also fire. So, oh, actually, barbettes don't exist here. Uh, yet, anyway, at least in the current version of the game, Alpha 7.6, you don't have barbettes for light cruisers. Anyway, they had three turrets on the bow, and then they had three on the stern. Good luck with that. Oh, it fits? Wow, it fits. And then they had another two turrets sitting somewhere behind here. So, here-ish. I don't imagine that that turret's going to be terribly effective in the sense that it can't turn. I would also like this one to rotate. If you want to rotate a turret, by the way, hold, uh, or yeah, press R and T to rotate one way or the other way. Now, that leaves us with an old full load of empty deck space here. Still, we're going to need a funnel. And these things had two. Unfortunately, only the thick funnels are available, so that's, well, really the only thing that I'm going to have to work with. Uh, that leaves me with a, well, a metric ass ton of engine efficiency. Probably way more than I need. There we go. <clears throat> We're already at 100%. What I might be able to do then is not use forced boilers, which add a lot to funnel weight, but to just use natural draft boilers. <clears throat> that saves me quite a lot of weight. We just went down from... 72, 74 to 67, 68. So that's quite the improvement. Now, I know it does not look like the Atlanta that I had in mind. Unfortunately, this is what I have to work with. Another uh, party trick, shall we say, that these things had were torpedo tubes. They had eight of these. So I'm going to set them up in two quadruple launchers. One here and one there. We still have a pretty hefty aft weight offset, but I don't really know how to fix that. I can move the turret forward a little bit more. But not by much. The entire superstructure... Oh, maybe this is going to fix it. Oh, that puts me at 6-1. Okay, that's a bit much. Could I move the secondary tower back a little? 4-8. 3-9. Three, three. I'll take three. And I could put the torpedo tube slightly farther back. They don't weigh a lot. They're only 50 tons, but every bit helps. I can also still sort of try and balance it out with the armor. Sometimes you can get away with that. Turn that that way. There we go. Now, these torpedo tubes were probably 21 inch. I haven't quite checked that yet, but I imagine that. So she was ready for a fight up close. If she survived long enough. That's kind of a thing. Hmm. This is also kind of a thing, and I'm not done yet. 
water loaders, electrohydraulic loaders, or hydraulic turrets. Rate of fire, 7.8 reload. Uh, sorry, 7.8 seconds for a reload. If I go for light shells, I can push that down even more to 6.7. But it also means I barely do any damage. Let's see, does this save me any kind of weight? A little bit. I could save on a little bit of the auxiliary systems. Or just drive the whole long range thing down. There we go. We're seven tons. <laughs> We're seven tons light of full displacement. Oh dear. That's pretty tricky. No, I only want to use the superstructure, like the, the front tower, not the secondary one. There. It's a little better. We're now at 0.6. That's something I'm willing to accept. 0.6. No. I don't think I can move this turret any further forward without it getting too much interference. Besides, these things are pretty light. They're 43 tons. They won't help that much. I could put the torpedo tubes in front here, but I don't want to do that. Oh crap, these are quintuples. These are fives, they're supposed to be fours. Alright, let's put that thing back in. Oh, 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 not over there. Uh, here. Rotate front. There we go. Right, 43 tons left. Let's check on the armor scheme. It was not a lot. They had one to 3.75 inches of belt armor. I do have 108% buff, so my armor is, well, relatively okay. But I don't think that these 5-inch guns are going to be lasting particularly long. The turrets were only armored with 1.25 inch, or 32 millimeters. So they had almost no armor. I can't quite pull that off in this game, because if I do that, then the turrets are going to go, well, airborne really, really quick. You're going to be launching these turrets faster than you launched the new Starlink satellite, so be very, very careful with going very light on the armor tur on the turrets. Um, <clears throat> this is where we're going to have to take some liberties. Because this is a light cruiser, and I would like to see it survive a little bit beyond the first two minutes of the game. Deck extended is just going to be uh, pretty shit. Secondaries, we don't have any. The ship did have 16 one-inch guns. But one-inch guns are going to be so incredibly ineffective. And the only thing I can put is two-inch guns. So I'll just completely skip over the fact that they had these anti-air guns. Is there anywhere I can put a bit more armor? Yeah, here. 3.3 inches of conning tower armor. All right, now let's get started and let's see if my uh, improvised Atlanta class is any good. There we go. Three heavy cruisers. Those things look pretty impressive and four lights. Old. All the destroyers. Gentlemen. Weapons off. Torpedoes off. Quinn off. No, Quinn might pipe up throughout the video. Because he's a bit unruly today. But I did want to record the video nonetheless. Now, I know what my light cruisers are. Because it's the Atlanta, the Tucson and the Chester. I don't know what the heavy cruisers are. Because the AI designed those for me. Oh dear. They're not terrible right from the get-go, but they do only have 6-inch guns. And that is something that I don't quite like, because I was hoping for something with a bit more punch to go through the heavy cruiser. Shells... Uh, you got a reduced complement. Lovely. But you do have super heavy shells. That might work. Maximum bulkheads. Whoa! The AI has blessed me with maximum bulkheads. I'm impressed. Uh, what I'm not too <laughs> happy about 
is that I'm eight and a half clicks away from the nearest ship. Now they do appear- holy shit. They do appear to be heading away from me, but it's still something that I really have to keep in mind. These look like they're all single guns. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks really intimidating when you first look at it, but they're all single barrels. Could be, what, six or seven inch? And then they have six torpedo tubes. Per light cruiser. On to the heavies. Ooh, that's significantly more guns. That is 18 guns on this heavy cruiser. Oh lord, and that's only the main armament. They also have stacked on a lot of smaller caliber weapons on the stern. We have a couple of five or six amidships. No visible torpedo tubes. Emphasis on visible torpedo tubes. Alright, I need to either sink all of the enemy fleet or survive for a while. Um, well, as I mentioned, I don't really want to outrun them because I think that's a bit cheaty. Because a convoy ship would never be able to do 36 knots. Even if they wanted to, they just would not be able to do that. Now, there was no starting range given for this scenario. So, I set it to 15 clicks, but that's not necessarily 15 clicks from the closest ship. Um, because if you look at it from the uh, Manor to El Abilie, the range of the heavy cruiser is 16.7. But if you look at it from the Sharky to the closest destroyer, sorry, to the closest light cruiser, it's 8 clicks. So we are, well, a bit fucked, shall we say. This means that I'm going to have to immediately chase these guys down. I want you guys to turn in. If I had them turn to, this, to the port side, they would interfere with the light cruisers. You guys are going to go there. And you guys are going to go here, quickly. All the guns are offline. Let's go. I want the heavy cruisers to start knocking out, well, the light cruisers, I suppose. Because they can't hit the heavy cruisers, because their weapon range is not sufficient. They do come with torpedoes, with a range of 12-6. Uh, yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now, if I follow my own guidelines, I'm going to have to set these things back to about 15 knots. I really don't enjoy doing that. But those are the rules. Make do. I mean, sure enough, I could just improvise and go, no, they're going to go 36 knots for starters, and then... When they're safe, I'm going to slow them down. But I feel that's a bit cheaty. Same for the smokescreen. I am itching, itching to use the smokescreen. But they didn't have those, so I won't. Columbia and Dallas are opening up against the light cruiser, which I imagine is going to be smoking up anytime soon. I am outgunned. It is seven actual warships against five. Oh, hello. Your gun range is only 11. I need you guys to speed in. I think the only way that we're going to make any kind of a chance or stand any kind of a chance is to push in and just rush the guys. That's when the six inch guns become more accurate and that's when the torpedoes become useful. The light cruisers are doing some sort of weird Japanese dance. And the heavies are turning to engage. All guns on the target. My dear earphone users, I do apologize. That was fairly loud. Oh, nice. We got one of the, uh, the semi-Atlantis firing. Warship has spotted the DD. Okay, that's not too bad, so long as the DDs aren't getting hit. The Sharky... The Sharky is still doing 22 knots. Okay. Chance to hit 0.8% against the light cruiser. The heavy cruisers are now also in range. Let's see what happens if I tell them to target that. 
And Tucson, Atlanta, and Chester are moving in. Good thing, too. There we go. 6.8% chance to hit the heavy cruiser. Identification is going pretty quickly. 37%. Uh-oh. Ooh, that was close on the Bailey. There's more coming in. Judging by the volume of fire, I'd say that these guys are not using terribly large caliber weapon systems. So if they were, then they wouldn't have this rate of fire. Although they are 18-gun ships. They are fairly <laughs> intimidating. Oh, Tucson. Uh, you're a bit early on the draw. I know that you have torpedoes, and apparently you're eager to show. Oh, crap. There goes one of my transport uh, DDs. Damn formation systems. I know that the guys are working on changing the whole formation system. But good lord, is it a pain in my ass right now. Even Quinn seems to think so. Alright, engage the light cruisers. Tucson, Atlanta. Start smoking up. More flooding on the Mississippi. Which is ironic, of course, because the Mississippi is a river. Now, let's see if we can take down this light cruiser before it gets an opportunity to use those torpedoes, if it hasn't already. There goes one of my transports. <clears throat> Semi-transports. We got the Izumi light cruiser. She has torpedoed a light cruiser? Really? Or she's targeting one now? What sort of torps do you have? Minus 78%, so they're probably electrics. Which is not good for me. Now my chance to hit is pretty bad, because we have that very, very smoky situation. Oh, shit. There goes another DD. Dallas. I cannot see the Dallas without immediately thinking of... Uh, what's it called? Um, the Hunt for Red October. The whole way to go, Dallas! That scene. Where the Dallas just gets a torpedo to home in on her and then sort of delivers it to the ship that's being, or sorry, to the sub that's being commanded by a very young uh, Skarsgård. If you haven't seen Hunt for Red October, I would very much recommend that you do. It's an older movie, but it checks out. Now, we have ID on the heavy cruisers 8 inch guns, minimum bulkheads. Oh, what? Wait. That was a torpedo from one of mine. From the Tucson. I really hadn't expect you to hit that. But I'm happy that you did. They have many bulkheads, but against one or two good torpedoes, uh, one, in fact, it's apparently more than enough. Now, I gotta be pretty careful with the Izumi. Because the Izumi has the potential to use the port torpedo tubes against my heavy. Against the Columbia. Oh shit. This is what I was worried about. You don't see these things until the last possible second. Especially since I did not have any room on my ships to install a hydrophone system. Look at that. Torp, torp, torp. The Atlanta got really fucking lucky there. Oh, there's more! Good lord. Cut that shit out. Uh, torpedo the heavy cruiser if you can. And meanwhile, all these 5-inch guns are pecking away at the uh, Izumi. With not even a, <laughs> a very good chance to pen. It's only 46-7. But at least these guns go off often. They have a pretty good rate of fire. But the damage is the cluster. They do 230 points of damage at the most. So the most thing I'm relying on is just volume of fire. And so far, that seems to be working. I want you guys to push in even more. We're going to hold off on the torps again because the uh, Dallas is getting in the way. Oh, hold on. Dallas, you might be able to torp that one. 
And so are you, Columbia. It's only, what, three torpedo tubes? Yeah, it's one underwater and two deck mounted. Chance to pen, 22%. That's not great. Um, they do have torpedo tubes. Yikes. Where? Holy shit. Port and starboard everywhere. Columbia, maximum turn to port. Tucson's taken some damage in some water, but overall she's still very, very cap uh, capable of fighting this war. I hope. Smokescreen out. Next avail, five minutes. It's going to be a long five minutes. Torpedoes away against the Tsurugi from Dallas. Izumi sinks. Nice. Next one is the Kasagi. I really need to keep a close eye on the torpedo tubes in these ships. Because they will really hurt when they, uh, they hit home. Size? 19 inch. Still not something I really want to play with. Torpedoes away... On the light cruiser, shit, we're targeting the wrong ship. Columbia. I gave you the wrong order, girl. It might actually work out if the tender you happens to run into the torpedoes. But I really don't want to get too close to the Tsurugi. Torpedo away, starboard side Columbia, single tube. Tsurugi immediately detected those torpedoes. Looks like these are not going to do much. So far, my Atlantis are actually doing pretty nice. I hadn't expected them to live this long, really. I mean, it is a very modicum, well, low amount of armor. Let's see. Just to pen 50 from that angle. 68 from this angle. Yep, that's the risk. Uh, looks like the Tenryu might get hit by the torpedo that was originally coming out of the Dallas, aimed at the Tsurugi. She's turning, though. Hit. That's 17% structural left. And that's no structural left. Dallas, hard to port. Before the Tsurugi gets any bad ideas about the use of torpedoes. Kasagi still taking some damage. Kasagi also having launched torps. Hard to starboard. Now, can we pen the Tsurugi at this range? Pretty pretty decently. Ooh, flash fire on the Kasagi. That helps. Oh oh. I missed one. Uh the what? Okay. The heavy cruiser all the way in the back got hit by a torp. But Tucson also got hit by a torpedo. And she's desperately trying to change her position in the formation. Oh crap, Atlanta also just ate a torp. Oh no. This could very well turn the battle. Tsurugi just sent a torpedo against Columbia. Columbia, time to get away from there. Whoa, that was the heavy cruiser. Flooded. Now, with the Atlanta almost, well, more like completely dead, it is going to be down to the Chester to deal with the Kasagi. Atlanta's down. Uh, how are your torpedo tubes? Are you alright? Oh, you're perfectly fine. You are perfectly fine. Steady as she goes. Chance to pen. Pretty damn poor. 29-2. I think the ship is even refusing to fire because the sinking Atlanta happens to be in the way. Kasagi might have launched her torpedoes. But I'm really not too sure. Come on, Chester. I need that starboard set on the Kasagi. 
I need her down. Quickly. Please don't tell me the starboard torpedo launcher got knocked out. Because that's not what I need right now. Oh, torpedo. That's not what I need right now. Chance to pen 45 7. 49, 51. At a range of 800 meters. Unfortunately, this light cruiser does have bulkheads and is capable of defending herself against flooding. How are those torpedo tubes looking? They might not have the proper rotation. I'm not even sure if the starboard one has moved at all. The port one has. Oh, I hit something. Twice, in fact. Way to go, Dallas. The Dallas has caused three incidents of flooding on the Tsurugi. But the Tsurugi is about to return fire. Ooh, flash fire on the Tsurugi. And on the Kasanagi. Sorry, Kasagi. Another flash fire. Dallas is going to be in trouble, though. The heavy cruiser is down. Oh, dear. I got her too close. I was too focused on the Atlanta. Or, sorry, on the... What do I still have left? Chester. I was too focused on the Chester. Alright, so I still have... Uh, no, not my DDs. Still have Columbia and Chester against two of their ships. That is going to be an interesting fight, shall we say. Are these sneaky torps? No, they're not sneaky torps. They're visible torps. Oh, look at that. Kinpu thought they'd pitch in. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh, now the torpedo launcher works. Yeah, now you're a little late, sir. Maximum turn. I want the Kasagi dead. But the Kasagi probably has her starboard torpedo tubes ready. This is probably going to be sudden death. I launch mine, you launch yours. Oh, buddy. Look at this. We are, what, 300 meters out. <laughs> That's an enemy warship right there. Neither ship, though, is launching torpedoes, and neither ship is shooting, because none of the guns, insofar as the Kasagi still has guns, have turned onto the target. Looks like this poor torpedo launcher is just... I don't know, inoperable? It doesn't seem to do anything. Chester, turn out of there. I don't want you dancing with the Kasagi for too long. Chester, let's get a bit of distance from Kasagi. Your heavy cruisers are 13,000 tons, mine are 12,400. You have 8 inch guns with a pretty decent rangefinder, even radar on it, and I don't. Wait. Oh, I launched the torps! Good night, Kasagi. You're done. Three torps strike the Kasagi and immediately destroy the ship. That leaves me free to chase down the Kinpu. The Chester, in the meanwhile, has taken some damage from the Kinpu. But hopefully not too much that she won't be able to survive for the next few minutes as her torpedo tubes ready up again. The Kinpu is the only Japanese ship that has not taken any kind of damage yet. Sure, She's taken a few scratches, but that's all that she's taken so far. So, Columbia. We're gonna have to change that. Let's see. Chester. Time to zigzag. Chance to hit. Target maneuver only 13%. Hmm. That debuff is not as big as I'd hoped it would be. 
Now, good thing that the Kenpu has torpedoes, which are not stealthy. Otherwise, I could immediately be taking torps with the approaching Columbia without being aware of it. Target maneuver minus 50%. That's a pretty decent debuff. Chance to pen is 8%. Chester is still trying to fight back. But she really can't do much. I think that the 14 points of damage that you saw... Yeah, they're 6-inch guns. That's the Columbia coming in. Trying to take some of the pressure off of the already damaged Chester. Chance to pen? Only 26%. Now, at this point, I'm not sure what is up with the tubes on the Chester. So I'm not sure if she's going to be capable of going back into the fight and launching her torps at the Kinpu. Because I'm not sure which which side actually fires. Sometimes it's the port side, sometimes it's the starboard side. It's generally unpredictable. All right, just start time to smoke up again. We can use that smoke to get a little closer to Kinpu. Kinpu is maneuvering at 28 knots, which would explain why the Columbia has trouble catching her. Turning circle, 481 versus my 339. I am able to torpedo that ship if she steadies her course. She has to stay on the current course. Torpedoes away from the starboard side of the Columbia. Just the deck mounted ones though. So that means that I have to use the Chester as a sort of magnet to pull the Kinpu into the line of the torpedoes. Now these are stealthy torps. Minus 75% detection. The Kinpu does come with a hydrophone station. But that might not be enough. And at the same time, the Chester did launch her torpedoes. So we get torpedoes coming in from here. And those two... Oh, no, actually, these are fast torps. Have you detected the torpedoes yet, Kinpu? Yes, she has. She's trying to avoid, but that turning circle is now going to turn against her. There she goes. That'll probably mean that the torps from the Columbia are no good. But these things are flooding like crazy. So the US convoy is safe. The entirety of the Japanese fleet has been sunk. And that means that the convoy, with only a loss of two ships, can still make it to its destination. Thank you to... Let me pull up the name again. Uh, to Corwin. Does not get picked up immediately. Don't fret, because I can still do it at some later date as long as you send it in through the link down below in the description. Now, if you'd like these video or if you like these videos and you want to support me in the channel, I'd be much appreciated and you can do that through my Patreon link down below. You can also use that to boost your chances of getting your scenario featured by becoming a naval architect, which means that you don't have to compete with uh, a current 1076 scenarios, but with only about 10. So if you really want to get my or support my channel and as a bonus get your scenario featured, you can do so through the Patreon program. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you thought of my Atlanta impression. I hope I did it some kind of justice and I shall see you guys soon for another video.